that that was always the funniest part of uh, just feel it so getting so big. Mm-hmm. Was when we would go to like we do Ryan Seacrest like radio show, like we do all these like Nick, Nickelodeon radio and Disney radio, and mm-hmm. they uh, <laughs> would always ask us like, "Is there anything we can't ask you?" <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. And you know how some of these mainstream artists, you know, you can't ask me that you can't, you know, they have all these rules and everything. But what I love about you guys is, you know, you guys have been making music for so long. And, you know, you guys ended up having a massive hit. And, And my question to that is, obviously, as a musician, as a songwriter, and, you know, being in a band, that is, you know, the goal, that is the big dream. Um, did you expect Feel It Still to to blow up right when you first heard that and when you guys were in the studio recording it? Was it just one of those songs where you're like, yep, this is it. This is going to be a, a banger. Yeah, you know, what's funny is I've actually had conversations with people that I played that song for mm-hmm. years before it, it wow. went to record. I, I had a producer buddy say, you know, I remember you playing me that... 2012 wow 2011 2012 um just right before evil friends came out Mm -hmm. i I was like hey i have this line i had written um rebel just for kicks uh to the melody of mr postman and literally everybody showed it to was like (laughs) that will not work well i've seen the i I don't mean to interrupt you but i've seen the interview you did with larry king and he he was like oh you stole it no we 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 had you guys you guys were like no we had to pay (laughs) yeah we we paid for that but i mean the the big reason i had done that like there was it's it's so much deeper than just like oh that's a great melody Mm. there's a lot of connection and there's a lot of like we grew up listening to that song. Like, if you listen to all these radio growing up... It's that which, bass. Yeah, it's, it, well, it's, it's all we listen to. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, I sang that song. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, it was one of those things where the, the musicologist, when, when he stepped in at the end, he was like... Before he realized I had done it intentionally, mm-hmm. he was like, where you're landing is... It is exactly Mr. Postman. Exactly. Like, it really is. Just, the pocket, the feel, everything. And th- it's because I listened to that song so much growing up and I had so many great memories connected to that song. Mm-hmm. No, of and, course. And part of this journey, I think as as musicians, we, we get so caught up in ego and not wanting to acknowledge where things come from. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you, you hear it in so many like hip hop artists finding their voice. Exactly. I mean, those that are just like, blessed with it the second they step out mm-hmm. i mean i listened to drake when he first came out and i was like oh that's Lil wayne like, yeah he's to that like, 0- 08 09 yeah yeah and same with kendrick mm-hmm. like kendrick had little bits of other other folks in there and, and that's what music is i mean it's and that's what it should be exactly it's all about taking taking that inspiration from different artists and influences and kind of making it into your own, you know, style. And that's what you guys did. Um, And and I got to say, other than, I mean, Sleep Forever is definitely in my top five songs of all time. Um, Another song, you know what? I can't believe, how come Tidal Wave never charted? It is such a good fucking song. (laughs) I love, I love Tidal Wave. I, I do have thoughts about why that, that didn't work necessarily. Um, it's a hook. It's yeah. got it's simple. It has the it has all the pieces. Mm-hmm. You know, but th- there there's another part of pop music that is just it's outside of this whole like melody phrase that pays. Like there's there's no science to, to what makes that work. Of course. The thing that makes it really special is you. Mm-hmm. It's, it's that, that personality. And I, I, I feel like I just didn't sell that song properly. Well, it was also I, on the same album with Feel It Still. So it's kind of, I mean, I guess you could argue with the momentum that you guys had. You, it should have had a chance to get on the radio. But I mean, I guess that's, you know. 
I mean, at least you guys got to have one song that just blew up and put you guys on to the next level. I mean, um, when was it, what year did you guys perform at Coachella? Was that in 2017 or 18? Uh, we play, I think we played Coachella four times now. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. Um, so, or maybe it's, it might be just three times. Okay. And what was that like? I mean, I'm sure that was a dream come true. <laughs> Yeah, the the last time we played Coachella was massive. Yeah, I mean, I was I was watching that video actually last night. I was doing a little research, and I I just watched. It was like an hour. Was it like an hour? You guys were just killing it, and I I love what you guys do with like the visuals in the background and everything. It's like really trippy. It's kind of that acid psychedelic kind of vibe to it. Yeah, it's just everything we love. So yeah, I mean, of course. <laughs> No, I, I just I just like to see that stuff. Like I I like to watch that when we play the shows. I mean, it's kind of like I don't really like being in front of people. I don't like facing a crowd. It's it, there's no sort of disrespect. It's like I I'm here to play music, mm -hmm. and I, I want to play with this group and whoever's there at that time. Coachella was especially. Uh, I guess just fun for us because it was the whole family coming together. It was mm -hmm. all the singers that have come out with us before and and Paul and Matt Cooker uh, like putting together a, a nice section to like little orchestra to come along with us. And yeah, it was just the whole, the whole gang was there. Yeah. And I, I mean, what's better than that? Um, I, I got to ask you, Jack Harlow is blowing up. I've been following him since 2017. I know you guys did a couple of shows together, right? Yeah. Yeah, so how did, isn't that, uh, what are your thoughts about Jack Harlow? I mean, he's a really talented artist. It I would be so cool to see you and Jack Harlow, Portugal the Man and Jack Harlow on a song. <laughs> I feel like- we tried to do it a couple of times. He's, he's sent me stuff and I've tried to sing on it. It's, my voice doesn't necessarily lend itself super well to to hip hop as much as I, I would really? love to do it. I, I think that I, I you know, because myself, I have a higher pitch voice. And I seen that one of the interviews you did, you were like, you know, that's just how, that's my voice. That's how you got to embrace it. And I think there was another interview I seen you talking to about how even when you guys started the band, you were looking to, you were looking to find another uh, um, lead singer. You just wanted to write the music, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm still trying to find singers for this band. Wow. And it, it's kind of, that is that is the downside, mm -hmm. I have to say, of just all the access that we have now. Like, because I like to learn, mm -hmm. you know, I like to learn more about other people's process. I just like seeing people who love writing music. Of course, yeah. And, and that's kind of what, where we're at right now is, we could have gone to school. We could have gone to like Berkeley or mm -hmm. the music schools and kind of learned that way. But we we can actually learn from the people who do this professionally. Mm -hmm. And that's you know, the best. I mean. And that's the best way to learn, I think, the hands-on, you know, just seeing it from yourself. You don't, and like you said, you don't need, you don't need to go to Berkeley or anything. I mean, if you have the motivation, the dedication, and it just shows, you know, before I even get to the next question, I know as a musician, like I said, you're, the whole big, you know, dream and goal is, you know, to have a, a, a massive hit one day. Did you think that it would happen before, like even when you guys came out with People Say? Like, did you think that was the song that would put you guys on the map? Or was it kind of like, it was just, just in terms of trying to get it out and market it? Yeah, actually, I mean, again, like wanting another singer for the band, mm -hmm. when, when I wrote People Say, all I could think was, man, if a country artist mm -hmm. or a, like, just the right type of artist played that song, mm -hmm. it would be huge. Of course. And, um, like, I, I feel like people say had, like, Sergio Simpson or somebody like that mm -hmm. that had that song. Like, it'd be a really big, big song. It'd be a smash hit, yeah. <laughs> and you... Yeah, but I don't know. I have the tendency to miss, like, one thing on those songs. I don't know if it's, like, self-sabotage or what it is, <laughs> It's, uh, there's always one part in every song where I'm like, I just can't figure it out. 
But I think, you know, I think as a musician, and especially as a very high intellectual musician like yourself, and just like every artist, we're our own biggest critics. You know what I mean? Like you could think this song sucks, but you might have a thousand or a hundred thousand fans be like, no, this song is awesome. So I think that's one of, one of the downsides of being an artist. I don't know if like, you agree, just being your biggest you know, self-critic. But it also has its pros and cons because it makes you a better artist and it, it keeps pushing you and driving you to come out with better content. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. It, it's it's not really like... I am my biggest critic for, for sure. Mm. I mean, everybody kind of knows that yeah. in the studio. Mm. And uh, I pretty much send everybody else to the vocal booth before I even do anything. Oh, wow. And And a lot of that is... I just kind of like to hear what other people do. Mm-hmm. I mean, honesty is the most important piece of music. And to take it back to Tidal Wave and Deal Is Still. Mm-hmm. Deal Is Still happened because it was just 100% who we are mm-hmm. and who I am. I mean, that, that bass line, everything about it. I mean, talking to the zombies about it too, like, we got to hang with them and them talking about, like, Back in the day, like interpolation is is a lot different than mm-hmm. uh, than sampling, but because of hip hop and because of the, the nature of music today, it, it kind of becomes one and the same. So because we, I use that melody, it becomes sampling. Mm-hmm. But the melody was just it was just kind of the vessel for that lyric, you know? Yeah, that, make, was, that makes sense. It was growing up and. And having a kid of my own and, and doing this thing where it's like this is not real mm-hmm. what we do like we play fucking music but we travel around and we eat at like fish one star <laughs> restaurants and, and we come from Alaska like we come from like the last place you would expect that band to come from yeah and well you guys live in in Portland now right or you guys go back from Alaska to Portland well, just coming from Alaska, mm-hmm. it is like that is the the rebel just for kicks. It's yeah, like, we're just punk kids, dude. Like we don't give a shit. We yeah. might be older now, but we still don't care. Like we've never, we've just never cared about this being on stage and like the sides that are so important to other folks. I guess mm-hmm. you guys just you know, go go out there and just make music and and just. It's it's a it's a sort of freedom, you know. You're just out there and you're just letting we're just it go. Nerds. Yeah, and yeah, we're nerds. There's <laughs> nothing like cool about any of us, and that's that's what that whole lyric is supposed to represent. Like we're mm-hmm. out here talking shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I mean, we we've always been pretty political and, and open about like the way we think the community should work. I mean, and that's what Sleep Forever. Sleep Forever is all about community and family. Mm. And anytime, just, anytime I get sad, I put that song on, and it instantly, like, even though it to me it's kind of a sad song, I take it, but it, it always puts me in a better mood, and it always just I just put it in, and it just everything it blocks out in the world. And another great song on that album is So American. I, I'm surprised that didn't even get in that much radio play. Really well, uh, ironically enough, it did really well um, in commercials, just around uh, okay. the world. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I think we did a lot of stuff in like France. Oh, uh, okay, that makes sense. It, it's funny because I think they saw the what the song is actually about. Mm-hmm. If you actually you read know, the lyrics, you act, you know, most people, it, it, yeah. <laughs> it's weird. It gets it gets glossed over a lot, but. I mean, it's just the way we are. Like, we, we grew up listening to the Dead Kennedys. Mm-hmm. And the Dead Kennedys is almost all satire. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it's it's all satire. It's like a song like Purple, Yellow, Red, and Blue about, like, when I grow up, I want to be a movie star. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to be that. Like, I don't <laughs> want to be any of those things. Like, I, it's, like, these are, like, really, like, unattainable goals that we don't really need to be facing. Like, I don't want you to looking at me or looking to me or any of those things like it's just the way we've always written but um so american was 
it's funny because it got it got licensed by the NFL. Oh, did it really? Yeah. So, oh, that's so, so cool. So it in, and, and it's so ironic because the, a lot of those folks are the people that I was singing about in the song. Yeah. You know, that's that's a, that was a song that I wrote so much about the border disputes and uh, immigration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you break down the lyrics, you guys are definitely talking about a lot of messages. And I I don't want to take too much of your time, John. I just have a few more questions. Um, What? what, So you guys just came out, what is uh, is it, Dead Mouse just came out with a song with you guys, and then you also came out with a new song with Weird Al Yankovic? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the Dead Mouse track isn't out yet. Um, Okay. COVID has kind of gotten in the way of that. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Honestly, like, I mean, you're talking about two of my favorite collaborations we've ever done. I, I know. I, and when I seen that, I was so ecstatic. I'm like, oh, shit, this is going to be, I, I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> yeah, Al, so Al is pretty much the reason I discovered any new music. Like, it, we grew up on oldies radio 100% mm-hmm. until our I mean, I'm going to use the, the term neighbor loosely because they were miles away from us, but mm-hmm. these kids we grew up with listened to Weird Al. And I, I'm pretty sure I heard Smells Like uh, Nirvana before Smells Like Teen Spirit. Uh, <laughs> Eat it with <yeah>. Beat It. <laughs> yeah, across the board, like I heard, like Weird Al was my introduction to pop culture and pop music. And you, you can even get the... We had a uh, VHS tape of all of the Weird Al music videos. Oh, that's so, so cool. With him, I, he's just, like everybody else, he's just a, a dude that plays music who happens to be incredible. I mean, we've known him for 10 years now. Oh, wow. And and just one of the, the, the sweetest people I've ever known. Mm-hmm. But also just such a shredder. I mean, he's jumped up on stage with us before twice, and he just pulls out his accordion and like, <laughs> just goes walks goes all over all of us. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, like, he's he's amazing, and he he did some remixes for the last album, mm-hmm. which are, are two of my favorite remixes we've ever done. Which surprisingly didn't get any attention whatsoever. It's, <laughs> It's so funny to me, like the things that I care about. They, I mean, they mean so much more to me than anything. Mm-hmm. No, I know what you're saying. <laughs> uh, Rescue, you know, it's like it's. I think it's funny. Like I, I think it's fun. Oh, definitely. Uh, what do you? What's the biggest thing that you guys miss with COVID going on? Is it performing? Is it uh, not? Not even on a personal level. Just with, just when it comes to music, what's the biggest thing that you that you miss with everything that's going on right now? that you can't really do? The biggest thing I miss is sitting down together and having a meal. At a, at a, at a restaurant? Yeah, and having yeah. a meal with folks that, that we, we, you know, like acquaintances mm. and friends. Because and, we obviously have like a, a fairly large bubble. Mm. Uh, playing music is weird. You, 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 you are like a family and you, do get to the point where it's like I kind of know what Kyle's gonna do. <laughs> I kind of <Yeah. laughs> know what he's gonna do, mm-hmm. and we kind of know who's being safe about everything. And the the thing I miss the most is just being being together. Yeah, I know. that's that's it. I know. Again, like being on stage is one thing, but I th- I think stepping away from it is really important. Mm-hmm. You need to step away every now and then to just to focus on what, like, what does this record sound like? What, what, what is this band? Yeah. It's, like, what, what are we doing? Like, because you get into these, these habits of, like, this is how the set sounds. These are the songs that we play, mm-hmm. and getting away from it. Like, like, I would like to play some some of our like more mid tempo stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd like to play like. I'd like to do a whole tour of just the songs that made me feel something Indeed. versus the song that, that did the most for us. I, I see what you're saying. And, and 
I gotta ask you, when you guys won the Grammy, did you like pinch yourself? Were you like, is this real life? Is this really fucking happening right now? Or is this something, was it just something like, nah, we we worked for it, this was bound to happen, and you know, or was it just like so surreal, like holy shit? Uh, it's, you see, my position on the Grammy stuff is, yeah, it mattered. Like, it, it mattered so much, and it matters to everybody. And it's like this really unattainable goal, mm-hmm. again. Like, and that's all playing music is. It's like a list of these, it's a series of these this will never happen moments. There's so many obstacles, yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to try to. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to try to get it. Of course. Um, if, if I could be like, uh, sound like uh, an ass for a second, I would say, <laughs> if anything, I was, I was really frustrated with the system because when we got, we got nominated for best pop, we won for best pop duo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen. So, so why, why not alternative? I exa- that's, not? What, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, what, that doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm glad that we, we both agree on that. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they wouldn't allow us to compete in those categories. And I, I think a lot of that is because 